Well, howdy folks and welcome back to Pecan Ranch. And we've done some uh, rearranging here in our hay barn, the carport, really it's our dry storage area. It's kind of multi-purpose thing. But as you can see, we've got some round bales now. Um, got some round bales in yesterday. That was um, quite the fun feat, getting it um, uh, unloaded off the trailer. Um, there was a little bit of a fiasco discovering that um, the uh, my buddy who had brought them out here had was using the wrong size trailer ball and if not for the weight of the round bales on that trailer that trailer would have popped off in fact it did whenever we were unloading it it popped off it's crazy um fun little experience um didn't get anything on video i didn't know it was going to be eventful at all but at any rate the round bales we've got one out to the cow calf pair right now that'll cut down on some of the uh, things that i've got to do uh, around the farm because they have access uh, constant access to hay now instead of me having to bring it out to them the thing is about round bales though is you need equipment to to move them um, you're going to need a trailer pretty heavy duty trailer because um, actually while trying to pull two bales on a smaller trailer my buddy had a uh, his uh, trailer much like the one i've got out here with 3500 pound axle it could handle the weight it's just the way the weight was distributed caused that trailer to sway so I had to get a bigger tandem axle trailer to haul them out and then moving the the, the bales i have the uh, benefit of having a very very generous neighbor who will let me use um, his tractor just about any time i put a hay spike on it and just move the bales over not a big deal um, so if you are in a position where you can uh, maneuver and handle um, <clears throat> wow the murder of crows just flying out here don't know where that came from fun fact a group of crows is called a murder of crows and they're being really loud um, <clears throat> anyhow <clears throat> Goodness, let me talk. Anyhow, if you have the means to be able to maneuver a round bale, if you've got large livestock, that's something to consider as far as equipment that I didn't really go over um, necessarily. You can get away without having a tractor to maneuver round bales. If you've got a truck that can drive out onto your pasture, you can just roll the bales off. Today's topic, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk to you about um, kind of the final piece of the puzzle of what you need to start a farm and this final piece of the general broad topic of the three broad topics being your personal traits and skills your tools and equipment and supplies and then the final um, piece of the puzzle being infrastructure then in future videos <clears throat> um, i will go over the specific enterprises that i have and talk more about specifics of how to get started, what you're going to need, um, and, and go over all of those details in that. But today, we're going to talk about infrastructure, so stick around, and I will explain to you fences, gates, electric fence, all of that fun stuff. Um, so stick around, and we'll see you folks here in a moment after I get my morning chores taken care of. everybody how is everybody hey how are you good morning oh, oh hey girl oh hey, maple oh, oh maple oh maple oh oh you piggies you're too big you're too big oh goodness 
<laughs> You're too big for this. You're too big for this. I don't know why they're eating out of the same bucket. I put a second bucket out there so that way Charlie could get in with uh, and, and eat some food because Big Mama's got those horns that makes it hard for him to get his head in there too to eat on the feed. So anyhow, I don't think I talked about the fact that I've got a mineral block out here. Um, usually with large livestock, that's not a bad idea at all, um, especially your grazing animals. Um, kind of is a good way to ensure that they're getting the minerals that they need. Um, uh, <clears throat> that they may not find uh, in your pasture or with feed. Um, plus, it's a nice kind of tasty treat. They like it. They like to lick on it. Anyhow, so we've got a round bale. It's not a giant. These aren't giant round bales. They're about seven or 800 pounds. Um, this round bale is flipped up on its flat side uh, for a couple of reasons. One, if we had more cows and we were concerned about um, them concentrating in an area, I'd probably roll it out. Um, but in this particular instance with the cow-calf pair, this is just a, kind of a better, plus uh, this particular area right here, in particular is a low spot, so feeding them here probably helped kind of fill this in a little bit. You can't really see very well, but underneath this bale, um, I've got it setting on pallets. And the reason for that is so, um, Moisture doesn't really build up and it doesn't get moldy. Pallets, pallets being a useful thing to keep around, um, as mentioned before, um, helps you know allow some airflow to come through underneath, keep the bottom of the bale dry so that way um, it doesn't get all rotted and moldy and mildewy and nasty. Um, and it'll help uh, cut, down on, uh, cut down on loss, um, some, some, some hay loss that we would have. So anyways, uh, morning chores for me are done, so I'm going to head on over um, and out of here, and we will talk about some infrastructure. Oh look, there they figured it out. Now we're, now we're eating out of two buckets. How about that? <clears throat> Anyways, we'll go talk about some infrastructure, some of the things um, that you would need. Um, in general for just about any enterprise on a farm. See you folks in a minute. All right, so let's talk about infrastructure. Um, every farm, every operation is going to have its various needs and things will vary um, substantially, but 
Um, there are some general um, kind of pieces of advice I can give involving infrastructure, and I just so happen to have a variety of different infrastructure types out here so I can cover <clears throat> what I would think hopefully be a, 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 a good enough, uh, good enough, give you, give you good enough information on and help, help point you in the direction of where you should start with your farm. Now, first things first with your infrastructure. When you are going to put infrastructure in place, especially if it's permanent um, or semi-permanent infrastructure, you want to plan ahead. And sometimes that's hard to do when you don't have experience. You don't necessarily know what you're looking for, know what you want in your design. I had the opportunity of having, um, this will be the third location that we've had farm animals at, or fourth, sorry, fourth location that we've had farm animals at. So this is, this is basically revision number four, and it has been, you know, our most efficient, effective setup because I've learned from the, um, uh, if in the, uh, from, from the previous farm. One thing, one piece of advice when planning is plan ahead for instance just a, a for instance right here in this little alleyway that i have um, between my chicken pens and rabbit pens is an eight foot gate section so eight foot wide now 90 percent of the time this is just an area that personnel are walking through we don't need to get equipment in and out but the reason i made it eight foot wide is because a i have the space so why not and b this way i can get things in i can pull a tractor through here if i need to um, <clears throat> uh, now it just leads into my backyard but if i ever needed to get a tractor in there for some reason i can um, and i'm not limited because i decided to go with a six foot gate or something along those lines um, so that's what i mean by plan ahead especially when you're doing things like sinking posts into the ground and concrete that are going to be very difficult to get up get out in the future i put these in here intending for them to stay for a very long time so because of that removing them if we decided that we needed more space would be a huge inconvenience so design your layout of your farm really think about it don't go with just necessarily your first design um, put your design get your design laid out and think about it try and think out every scenario of where your design could have flaws and why you need to improve that design and and, and just plan 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 before you sink your first post into the ground now the way i've got it set up <clears throat> is i have my chicken run over here and right now it's a chicken duck pig run um, and then over here i have my rabbit colony and then on the other side over there we've got the pigs now <clears throat> this gate this inside gate is not very necessary per se we shouldn't necessarily need two of them one here and one there but the reason why they're there is because my gates in here this kind of creates an added layer of security if say we open this gate up a rabbit slips through and um, then they're not going very far they're kind of caught in this little alleyway. We can wrangle them back into place. <clears throat> also, if say I'm coming through here or more likely one of the kids are coming through here, forget to close that gate all the way and pigs get in. Um, we've got another gate right over here that will keep them from getting into the yard and you know, just being generally uh, obnoxious and messing around with things they shouldn't be messing around with and having to wrangle them up out of there. Um, or if, for instance, this gate gets forgotten um, and the dog comes through. Now, my dog um, is pretty well trained and he knows he's not supposed to be in here. So he oftentimes won't unless we call him through here. Sometimes we do have him come through here, especially if he goes hunting with me for squirrels. Anyhow, neither here nor there. So those features, like it may seem simple, may seem like a simple thought process, but it's, it's that feature that I really wanted in this particular area because I wanted that added level of security. There are tons of fencing options. It, you, it range anywhere from chicken wire to hardware cloth 
to welded wire, woven wire, hog panels, goat panels. There's a ton of options involving fencing. Now I will say this, this welded wire is one of the more inexpensive means of doing a, um, a four foot, five foot high um, rolled wire uh, option. <clears throat> I will say this also though, this is the first time that I have used welded wire in my farm on a large scale and I'm not a big fan of it, honestly. But it's here now, so that's what it, where, how it's gonna stay for a while. Um, if I were to, if I were to do it again, I'd probably go with a woven wire. It's a little bit more solid, more sturdy, um, or a panel fencing of some kind, like a hog panel, um, something along those lines. <clears throat> um, another thing that I would not suggest is I thought it would be a good idea it, to to cut down on some costs and go with these style posts. Um, they're I'm pretty sure they're called garden posts instead of your T post. I don't like them. Now they're solid, they're sturdy, they do what you need them to do in about half the cost of T post. However, one of my major um, uh, complaints about them is this here. I've got T post insulators, and you really can't buy insulators for this. So on all of these posts. To insulate my electric wire, um, I have to zip tie them in place, and that's just, it's more inconvenient, takes more time to put up, and it's, you know, not as aesthetically pleasing, and it's um, not quite as sturdy, honestly. Um, so if I were to do it again, I wouldn't use these posts, I would use T-Post, and in the future, if there's ever a remodel of this fence, if we're taken down and we're redoing this fence, these posts are going to come up and I'm going to replace them with T-posts um, to make my life easier. There's a variety of products available for T-posts that are specifically designed for T-posts, like T-post clips for insulators, um, things along that those lines. You can also buy um, these adapter plates that slip over T-posts that you could attach 2 by 4s to or, or d any dimensional lumber that is not available to these garden posts. So um, if, you, if you're looking, you're, you're planning your farm out and you're shopping for supplies and you're thinking, hey, I can cut my, cut my cost in half by uh, on the post side of things by going with these cheaper posts that are about you know $2 and some odd change a piece versus $4 and some odd uh, change for a T-post, I'd recommend spending the money and getting T-posts. In fact, after having put all of this up, all of my uh, additional fencing that I have done, I've done with T-posts because um, this is just not the way to go. <clears throat> now, um, that's kind of a uh, kind of a what I wish I would have done moment. Uh, another thing is too, this stuff is coming out. This is our um, electric wire. It's kind of hard to see um, along with this uh, welded wire fence. Um, it's galvanized. Uh, electric fence wire I don't like it don't recommend it don't use don't waste your time on it poly rope or poly tape um, those are and I've showed in, a, in another video which I'll show you some here those are no more expensive than your galvanized wire honestly I think it may be a few bucks more um, depending upon where you're getting at but it's just a nylon braided rope with um electric conduit wired into or not conduit but a electric conductor wire uh woven into that um uh that uh that nylon braided rope it's easier to work with it's uh it's it works it works just like rope it, it wraps just like rope and i highly recommend using that instead of galvanized wire um it's way easier to work with and i don't know I mean, my fence tester shows the same voltage getting pumped out of both of them, but whenever, it's for me, for, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's true or not, but it feels like I get a bigger shock out of that poly rope. Uh, so I recommend going with that, easier to work with. <clears throat> in fact, all of my galvanized wire is coming down and poly rope's going in its place um, as I get to it. I've started in some sections and I've gotten some replaced with poly rope. In fact, the biggest section was this entire um, front pasture here was all galvanized wire. I took it all down 
and redid it with poly rope um, because I was just sick and tired. One of the things I don't like about it is not only is it a pain to work with, but um, it is it it tends to uh, unless you pull it real tight and put tension on it, then <clears throat> it will it will adjust with the weather as it's getting colder they've gotten slack in some areas and it's just it's just been a general pain so um so along with the infrastructure um one of the things that we we need we need shelter for our animals um hey what's up oreo what's up <clears throat> so my two males in here they had a bad day yesterday um they they had to get castrated um, and it's just something that you really got to do with um, meat production pigs. Um, your males ought to be castrated. It uh, just greatly improves the quality of the meat. Hey, Hoss, are we friends again? Are we friends? Kind of. Oh, hey, Kevin. Hey, our, oh, what's up? Well, it's been less than 24 hours, and I guess they've forgotten all about it. We're friends again. Um, they were a little mopey yesterday, but they are a lot happier now today, and they seem to be seem to be fine. They seem to have forgiven me. Um, I didn't make a video on that, and I'll explain here. Uh, I didn't make a video on that because I feel like there's plenty enough tutorials on uh, castration tutorials for mi all, basically all of the methods um, that you would need for uh, pigs or cattle um, and, and goats and sheep, like. It, you'd be surprised how many tutorials on castration there are on YouTube. So I didn't feel like adding to the uh, big giant pile of it on there. Um, there's plenty of informative ones out there. Um, you can check them out. A couple good uh, channels to check out is Sheridan Park Farms. He raises pasture-raised pork, and he has a he has a tutorial on castration. Um, just a few acres farms has a tutorial on castration. There's just um, on both I think uh, cattle and pigs. So um, So that being said um, I didn't feel like uh, I felt like that was a, a, a topic that's covered enough. So <clears throat> Here's my setup uh, for structure for the uh, or shelter for my chickens um, this this pen is a is a poultry slash waterfowl pen. It's for my birds. It's my bird pen. Um, so I have shade. Now I have a lot of natural shade, but so this shelter is not as much for shade as it is for um, as it is for protection from the rain. Um, this particular area right here is just a nice additional area for them to have a dry spot, and I can have their feeder covered and make sure that it's not getting um, rained on and getting the, the food all mucky. Now, this feeder can um, be somewhat water or weather resistant. It can be d taken outside uh, or kept outside. But in my particular instance, I took the feeder door off for the birds. I wasn't 100% certain if my um, chickens would be able to figure it out with the door, so I just took it off because I knew I'd be undercover and didn't really have to worry about it. So, um, by the way, I recommend whenever it comes to feed, you're feeding your chickens, um, get something like this. It's just a dog food feeder, um, and it doesn't cost any more than some of the bigger hanging chicken feeders. And um, it works phenomenally. Holds, uh, it holds over 50 pounds of chicken feed, which, depending upon how many uh, chickens you have, if you um, have a dozen um, or so, then 50 pounds, is a uh, little over a week's worth of food if you have you know probably 20 24 two dozens it's uh it's closer to a little less than a week's worth of food so um i recommend those um uh, doesn't necessarily have to be that brand this pet lodge one is just available at tractor supply and atwoods it's kind of readily available uh most of the time and it's i think this one was 70 bucks so <clears throat> um, you would spend 40 dollars on a smaller chicken feeder and they don't make chicken feeders readily available in like the 50 pound size you can make bigger ones yourself but if you're just you know wanting to buy something to put down that's the one i'd go with so <clears throat> this area here and this is kind of just a backup little shelter area um, if they wanted to get in here and hang out and it served a good purpose for the pigs uh, to have a nice little shelter area as well um, water so 
for the chickens, as you can see, um, this particular water, I've got set on pavers. And the reason for that is not because of my chickens, it's because of my ducks. If I put water, actually, I think we have a water pan up here. Look, look at what these guys are doing. Look at it. They're just making a mess. They're just playing in the mud. <clears throat> if you allow them to have access to water and dirt, they will quickly mix those ingredients and create mud because that's what they like to do. They like to use the water to soften up dirt so they can um, uh, look for bugs and stuff in the mud. So <clears throat> um, that's why that's set up there. That pan's actually got to come out. It was there because the pigs were a little too short a, a, a week or so ago to reach into that and they've already gotten tall enough they can reach into that and drink that water. This is our roost. So when you are designing your roost, and I go into specifics whenever I talk about chickens. Um, there are a, a couple, just basically two basic things that you need. One, you need protection from the elements. So that's, you know, my wind protection is protected on three sides. And for orientation purposes, so you know that direction is north, that direction is south. So the open side <coughs> is to the east. Now, what does that mean for me in my area? Our prevailing winds are almost always from the south and that does change seasonally, but we get most of our winds from the north in the winter or from the south um, in the summer and well, most of the rest of the time of the year. The winter is really the only time we start, we see a decent amount of north winds, which we're getting right now. Um, so having it open to the east is the, you know, in my case, it, um, it, it will provide the most maximum protection from the wind because there is uh, almost never an easterly wind. And when I, if we did, I've got a lot of woods back there to uh, basically block the wind so we're not getting strong, straight gusts of wind like you would on an open pasture. <clears throat> but we almost never get winds from the east. So you need protection from the, from the elements. We've got our cover up top to protect them from you know, water, uh, from your rain and snowfall. We've got our three-sided protection from the wind. We have roosts for them to roost on because that's where they like to sleep. They like to sleep perched. And when it's cold outside, it's particularly helpful because it helps, um, it helps them keep their feet warm so they can get up on a perch and, um, and cover their feet with their feathers. And then we have our nest box set up which is accessible from the outside. The eggs theoretically are supposed to roll back, but I've got to make some improvements up here. And again, that'll come, um, I'll go over this more specifically when I talk about each enterprise individually, but we're talking about infrastructure today. And so you really got to plan out what are your animals needs and how are you going to meet those with your infrastructure? Um, it's pretty basic, every animal really needs protection from the rain, protection from the sun. And your climate is going to vary um, wherever you're at. So you wanna take those specific climate challenges uh, and, and keep them in mind and then apply them also directly to your animals <clears throat> because what chickens need protection from is different from what rabbits do. Rabbits are good winter um, weather animals. They handle cold weather very well. They've got a lot of fur and they don't really have as much of a problem in the winter as do my chickens. Ducks are another animal that does well in the winter. They are um, very well insulated and they don't really care too much about the cold weather. It doesn't bother them. The chickens, you have to take special precautions, <clears throat> honestly, in order to, um, in order to uh, uh, take care of them. Now, uh, similar setup, what I've done over here is basically the same thing as over there uh, for the chickens, is I've done uh, four by four posts that I've uh, buried uh, two and a half feet into the, uh, into the ground and put concrete in each of these posts and then set up, uh, set up with two by sixes. All of this pressure treated as well and then gave them a uh, roof. So we have um, so we have these structures set up and when you're planning it this is what I say like I say when you're planning plan for the future even if you don't think you're ever you always want more you always want to set up more if you have space available like in my instance I had plenty of space available and so I have basically set up both of these runs to accommodate more animals than we presently have um, and that's so if we add to our flock we've got um, 
uh, we've got the space to do so and it's not going to put any added pressure on the ground in here and they'll always have grass to uh, to to to, to uh, graze on and stuff things of that nature and then for the rabbits uh, for the colony if we add to our colony or we increase our the size of our operation for the rabbits we'll have plenty of space available to us without having to uh, make some major changes and that's the um, that's why you plan ahead because once you start putting uh, permanent and semi-permanent infrastructure in place it is awfully difficult to um, to change your you know if you decide oh you know what we should have gone with you know uh, a 20 foot longer run uh, then it's a lot more work in the future to either take up some old posts and, and, and adjust that run or um, or to add to it, it, it especially if you start building around and, and you kind of pigeonhole yourself into a spot. And that's another thing too is I never intend on um, placing infrastructure over this way uh, necessarily if i do put infrastructure over this way it will have to be very well thought out so that way it does not um, force me into a position where i can't adjust the size of this if i need to or make it larger which in this case i could make it larger if i wanted to i could you know cut out this little section of fence and then um, allow them to be able to come into here and I can move the fence over some more and you know double the size of my um, of my run if I needed to <clears throat> so not only do you want to set it up to where with your existing infrastructure you can you can increase or expand without major inconvenience but also set it up in mind so that way if you wanted to make adjustments to it in the future, you can do so easily. <clears throat> um, one of the reasons why um, the pigs are in the location they are is we already have this conveniently shaped little notch out here and these conveniently placed trees. Um, but for instance, when it came to design and thought into where this gate could go, because I could have put this gate on this side over here, um, but instead, I placed it over here and it's not just because not just because it faces the gate in and it's a shorter walk in here but the reason I did that is if for instance we are grazing them on the neighboring pasture then all I have to do is do some step in stakes and create a straight shot right over there and it allows them to um, we could graze them over there and still leave this open for them to get back home to their shelter um, and and have and, and keep this available to them as a home base while they graze on that pasture but close off this uh, pasture back here if we're needing to let it rest um, so these are all things that you want to think about and plan ahead when designing and setting up your infrastructure um, it everything from location of gate placements and realistically um, that's that's honestly one of the um, one of the most important things in your planning process is where are you placing your gates? Where are my gates going? Um, and in this case, you want know, to think long and hard about it. Not the gates can't be moved, but um, again, before you put it in place, it's easier to make a decision or it's easier to to, to install it rather than to remove it and install it somewhere else. So I've, you know, I had it set up here so that way they can straight shot over there. We can, we can uh, fence this off with electric fence and let this pasture rest. And that allows them to graze that pasture but still have access to their home base. If say, for instance, we were winter grazing them over there. Um, Cause in the summertime and the warmer weather, I'm not as concerned about them having access to that shelter and a windbreak. So when they're on the back pasture, they don't need to come up here for their shelter. They've got plenty of shade because there's lots of shade trees available there. So they'll be able to be protected from the sun, but there's not a ton of windbreaks. Same with this pasture over here. There's a decent amount of, um, uh, there's, there's a, so in the summertime, they could graze that and I wouldn't worry about them coming back to shelter. But in the wintertime, I'd like them to have a good windbreak. Um, so having access to the shelter um, allows 
uh, allows them to have that, but we could still section off this um, and let this pasture rest um, if, if we need to. Now, um, one thing that I'm going to add to this pen, in fact, I have it available over, over yonder. I've got another gate right there because I'm gonna place a gate on this side. And that's just going to be for ease of loading and unloading pigs without having to drive on to the pasture, especially in the wetter weather. And, it, and in the, somewhere in the future, this whole area is going to be gravel and it's going to be, you know, for parking and moving equipment. And um, I've got, you know, trailers stored over there and things of that nature. So we'll have... Um, so we'll have gravel here. So if we needed to load and unload pigs onto a trailer, we'll have direct access to this side without having to maneuver around, makes it a little bit easier. And um, that's one of those things, you know, think about gate placement. And that was one thing I overlooked. So now I'm having to go back in and add it in. Not a huge deal, but it's just better to have designed it um, to your needs in the first place rather than having to modify and change your design in the future once you have the infrastructure in place. Um, <clears throat> so um, another one of, you know, and I have another gate over here. This is not a gate. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about gates and infrastructure. This, I mean, it operates as a gate, but it's not a gate. Um, this is a cattle panel. It is a um, 10 foot cowboy panel and um, it was just what was available from my supplier at the time. He didn't have 10 foot gates and you can make it into a gate. You could use it as a gate and that's what I've done. The only thing is, is with the, um, with the pigs, they could fit underneath that. So I had to get creative and run a uh, hot wire underneath to keep them from wanting to squeeze through. This, this particular panel is designed more for cattle um, than any other type of livestock. And it is really designed as a standalone panel that you can build catch pins with. You've got these, um, you've got these little pieces here that allow you to, uh, to link up to other panels and you can build kind of a round pins, catch pins of that nature. Um, so anyhow, um, uh, this is eventually going to get replaced, honestly, with a uh, with a gate like what I've got over there. So think about your gate placements. Um, think about access, and you can never have too many gates. In fact, you'll find, especially in larger uh, larger areas, you'll find that you will have no problem at all talking to your neighbors and saying, "Hey, do you mind if I have a gate between our fences, between our pastures?" They're likely not going to mind. And even if you don't intend on using your neighbor's property for anything and they don't intend on needing to use yours, it's not a bad idea to have a gate. Put a gate there because if you never use it, it just stays closed all the time. If they need to, if, if we need to get back and forth between properties for whatever reason, having that gate there will make a world of difference and make your life just a whole lot easier. Um, so think about that gate placement, where you're gonna put them um, and how you're gonna have access to everything. Um, you don't want to have just one gate on the very far back side of your pasture that you've got to drive all the way around to get to to get in and out. It just makes it very inconvenient. So I have several gates. This particular pasture has um, four points of entry. You've got your, I've got my gate over there. Um, and then I have my gate to my neighboring pasture. I have my gate to my backyard. And then I have a gate on the back side um, with, a, that a, with an ATV trail that I cleared leading uh, to the back pasture. <clears throat> so that is my four points. I have four points of entry for a one and a half acre paddock or pasture. Um, and it may seem overkill, but all of these locations are convenient for other reasons. This is convenient for me to get to that pasture, um, which right now houses my cows um, or my cow calf pair. Um, the, uh, it also, this gate is convenient uh, for my neighbors um, because um if they needed to if they need to drive their tractor so this neighbor actually just, just so happens to be the son of my neighbor on the other side and if he needs to drive his tractor over there he doesn't have to go all the way around he can go in cut through this pasture um then cut over here and he doesn't have to uh, go all the way around more of a convenience thing again proper gate placement can make your life a whole lot more convenient and that's um 
probably one of the most important things when designing your layout to really think long and hard about where your gates are going to go. <clears throat> so, um, so we've talked about our shelters, we've talked about our structures. Um, when it comes to your the the type of animals you're keeping, it may you it may or may not include having electric fence in your in your plan, and may or may not include having electric fence on your property. I would. May, I would do what you could to not make it difficult to install electric fence and what I mean by that is Don't do things like what I did and don't get this these garden posts Have use T posts instead because you may not want to use electric fence now But it'll be easier in the future if you do you can just buy T post clips, <clears throat> which I'll show you um, Or these clip-on insulators, which I'll show you here right quickly um right here so we have a standard t-post right this insulator right here just clips on to the t-post no hardware no tools necessary just clips on i just go through clip it on and you have to have an insulator to be off of to keep it off of your metal fence so that way it doesn't uh, ground out into your fence um, and then we've got our poly rope this particular insulator works both with galvanized wire and poly rope um, and so I've got those. I personally recommend using at least a five inch um, offset insulator to keep it off of the fence aways. You could use a two inch or something smaller like that. But if you're, um, the, if, if, you, if, the, if that wire touches that fence, it's gonna ground out and your fence doesn't work anymore. Your electric fence doesn't work anymore. So, that's another piece of infrastructure is your electric fence and i will actually do a video on electric fence one whole video on on everything electric fence um, but we've got those type insulators we have these type which are uh, your fiberglass step-in stakes that have built-in um, places uh, wire hangers to, to hang your wire um, we have also um, used some of these round fiberglass posts that have the screw type insulator which is pretty handy because you can adjust the height to wherever you want custom wise um, and that's what we've got all the way around the cow's pasture and um, so I, I've got a, a variety of them here and that's what you know, my electric fence, <clears throat> my electric fence does two things. Um, it keeps some of the animals in, like the pigs and the cows, but it also keeps predators out. I've got it set up. Um, so even on the other side and the backyard side where there's no animals besides my dog, um, it, I've got a wire running down through the bottom to primarily to discourage and if say a raccoon or something decided to get into the backyard and try and go that route to get into my chickens or rabbits it will keep them uh, keep them out of there um, so you may not ha use electric fence as a primary means of containing your animals but it may be worth considering to keep predators away from your um your 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 smaller animals uh like your your chickens or your ducks or your turkeys or your um rabbits or really whatever small animal you're keeping on the farm um, that will help you out um, as far as uh, uh, take care of predators so um so we talked about our We've talked about our shelters, we've talked about our fencing, we've talked about electric fence. Um, another piece of infrastructure that I think is relatively invaluable, and that's where we started today, and that was in a dry storage area. Um, that is just a carport. Now it came with the property, um, and it, to me it was a big plus, because I knew I would have a use for it. At the time, I hadn't decided exactly what I would use it for, but I knew that it would become useful. If you don't have <clears throat> um, a dry storage area, a covered storage area for things like hay and equipment, um, it would be something to consider budgeting in with your farm to add. Um, typically, a carport structure like that is not a super, super expensive endeavor. I mean, it's not cheap. Um, 
but it varies you know kind of a, around the a, around the nation and who you talk to and what what company does it but you can build one yourself if you're handy enough or you can have one uh, put in place and you're probably talking less than ten thousand dollars for most sizes in a lot of cases you can get them for two three thousand um, but you you need something like that uh, we don't need it it's just very useful to have when storing hay especially round bales uh, hay straw feed some something that can keep your stuff out of the weather you can do so in a shed uh, especially if you're going in a smaller operation and you're only using square bales um, and you just have your feed to store um, not a big deal uh, you could store this stuff in your garage things of that nature but it's nice to have a separate storage space for your dry goods like that but I would say that a, a good piece of infrastructure that you would want to consider having on your farm if it doesn't have it consider the cost and budget that in when adding to your farm is a uh, carport or a barn of some kind <clears throat> where you can store things now if we had a larger cattle operation and if you're considering getting into a larger cattle operation consider the fact that you're gonna have to store a lot of hay um, I mean just 10 head of cattle uh, depending upon your location and your uh, and your growing season and how long you have to feed hay you could be looking at you know no less than 30 round bales that you have to um, have over the winter and that may mean that you've got to store 15 or 20 of them at a time <clears throat> uh, and so you got to take that into consideration these are kind of your basic infrastructure needs and it's not as much honestly about the infrastructure what type of construction materials you use as much as your planning <clears throat> and again it's really hard it's really hard to plan if you don't have experience um, so that's where I would suggest to you to talk to a local farmer in your area you can always reach out to me and I can I have no problem at all giving advice <clears throat> we actually even will do consultations come out to your farm um, that's part of my farm services company I, w I do farm designs as well um, and can help put together your vision like what what do you want to accomplish what are you going to need there may be some details that you overlook because you don't have experience and that's fine if you if you have someone who does have experience reach out to them make use of that knowledge and that wisdom that they have and ask them hey do you think this will work do you think it'll set up this way um, gather as much information as you can make the educated decision on your own um, after you've gathered the information from all of your valuable sources and the, and the people that you talk to and put together your plan design it think long and hard about where you're putting your gates and how you're setting your infrastructure up and then once you get it up there don't be don't be surprised if you've got to make modifications don't be surprised if you're gonna to have to improvise and wing it a little bit to uh, improve your design and that's another thing too is once you get everything up don't just sit back relax and get complacent and think all right this is it this is all we've got constantly be thinking how can I improve my setup how can I make it better how can I make this easier on me how can I make this better for the animals and you know if it ain't broke don't fix it but if it can be improved improve it um, and that is the best advice that I can give on this particular subject if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button um, if you have any suggestions on topics in the future please comment below subscribe so you don't miss anything because in the future I'm gonna go over um, our specific enterprises the specific needs of your of your specific uh, animals and and uh, and how your setup should be involving those particular animals um, and I'll, I'll be going over that as well as um, we should here in the future also I'll be getting a, a, a video put together on electric fence um, as well um, so if you have any questions feel free to shoot them my way I would gladly help someone decide how they're going to build their farm and uh, it's really one of my passions and joys is to see other people get involved in farming and see their journeys along the way subscribe for more videos and until the next time um, we'll see you all back at the ranch